to DCS MiG-15 VIS Startup Training. I'm Top Gun with the AKA War Dog Squadron. I'll be working today off of checklist version 1.3. So since we don't ha want to deal with the engine noise, let's go ahead and close the canopy first. You have three controls for that. You have a knob over your head that you kind of have to really crank around to see. And you also have two knobs, one on either side of you. So the one above you is the one that closes it. And then once it's closed, the one on either side will open it. Uh, but there is a key binding in the key listings that for a toggle command, so you can open and close it with a single button or switch. So I would recommend doing that. Uh, before we get any further, I'll note that I'm currently using the English cockpit. So if you want to, it's probably defaults to Russian. So if you go into DCS when you first launch it, go into options and then go to the special tab and then click on the MiG-15. And on that page, there's an option there for cockpit modifications. It'll probably be, like I said, it'll probably be defaulted to Russian, but you can choose English. So uh, that's not a separate third party mod. That's just built directly into DCS for this aircraft. So let's go ahead and crank open the oxygen, which is this knob right here. Rotate it counterclockwise as much as you can. And then let's activate the circuit breakers. You'll have to kind of lean down a bit in order to see them all. Uh, you'll actually be skipping over the battery to start with, which they call the accumulator. Uh, but you want the generator, the nose light, the trim master, the artificial horizon radio switch and there's a couple that are buried behind here as well uh, arc switch and I think there's there's only three in this row and then there's four in this row that's kind of buried underneath here so I'm trying to get a view of here but yeah it's pretty tough even with track IR to see those so let's contact the ground crew to get ground power established. Let's bring up the comms menu and F8 for ground crew, F2 for ground power, F1 for on. And if you see the lights turn on for the landing gear indicator sure indicators, then you've got ground power at that point. Uh, so let's go ahead and tune the radio to ATC. Now this is a tricky one <coughs> compared to most other aircraft. Uh, this aircraft, unlike the World War II modules for DCS, who can't dial in a frequency, you know, they only have presets. You can do specific frequencies in this aircraft, but it's not like anything else, I think, in all of DCS. You actually have to zoom in underneath this sill here to this tuning knob here. And <coughs> as a interesting note, that basically, that knob right there mimics this right here. It's the same thing. And if you move one, it'll move the other but you get more finer control on this small knob. So you, know, you can get away with using this one. Uh, it might be easier for people who have uh, older versions of Track IR, but uh, I would recommend in this aircraft to have the zoom in slow and the zoom out slow controls key mapped to something on your hotels because you're going to need to really zoom in on this. And the other problem with this is that this goes, this doesn't go by like AM or FM frequencies. It goes by what's called wa uh, uh, wave. And you'll have to go through the MiG-15 manual. There's a page that shows what the wave frequencies are for the ATC for most of the airfields modeled in DCS. And the one that I'm at right now uh, is wave 164. So we got to rotate this knob right here. We're looking at this outer edge of this dial. There we go. And you can you have a little indicator here to help you with this. 
and that's this gauge right here. And when you don't have a signal, the needle is buried at the bottom here. And when it's picking up a good, you know, decent signal or excellent signal, it'll be pegged either around three or all the way to the right. And you can see, I'll go ahead and tune it away from the channel for a sec. And you can see it went away. And there we go. So let's bring up the comms menu and contact ATC. So F5, F1 for your airfield, and F3 to start. Краснодар, 144, запуск. 144, Краснодар, запуск разрешаю. Ветер у земли 1, 2, 1, скорость 2 метра в секунду. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on. Got, we have a bank of switches over here. We've got the ignition switch. And we've got the external lights here. And instrument and light switch. Transfer pumps. And booster pumps. Uh, make sure your throttle is all the way in the aft position. And before we start the engine here, uh, one of the controls that you're going to want to key map is you've got a fuel cock lever here kind of wedged down in between the seat and the fuselage down here. Uh, there's a key binding to set the fuel shut off to 50% and then another one to 100%. You'll definitely want to key bind those because it's pretty difficult to find it down in here in between these seats. Uh, I believe you can mouse wheel scroll over it, uh, but it is pretty difficult to find it. So, so to start the sequence, there's a little protective cover here on the left side of the throttle. Click that to flip it up, and the start button is hidden underneath that. So you just need to press and hold that for a couple of seconds. And once it's stabilized, just shy of 11, you hit the 50% for the fuel cock. You'll probably want to click and hold it for a good second or two. And then once it's stabilized again at around 11 and a half, go ahead and put it up to 100%. Again, you'll need to hold it for a couple seconds. You're going to be looking at this gauge primarily right here initially. Once it gets to just under 13, you can go ahead and start advancing the throttle. You want to get it up to about 5. You're basically looking at the inner gauge. You want to get this up to about 5 or so until the generator off light turns off. Basically, once you get up to this point, the engine's spinning fast enough that it's supplying electrical power to the aircraft on its own. You don't want to go too much higher than that because then you'll start rolling otherwise. And I don't believe there's any parking brake in this aircraft, although you can just go ahead and squeeze the brake lever on the stick. So let's go ahead and turn on the battery. Now we'll contact the ground crew to turn off ground power. So we'll get back to the main menu for comms, then F8. F2 for ground power and F2 for off. Отключить питание. Прием. Командир, наземное электропитание отключено. Let's go ahead and pressurize the cockpit. Which is this one right here. Also controls temperature, but obviously we're not caring too much about that. And while we're at it, 
let's go ahead and set the barometric to zero. It already is at this point, but if you need to make adjustments, the knob is in the lower left corner of the instrument. Let's recage our ADI so it's level. And then uncage it. Uh, flaps I've got listed as part of the startup sequence. Uh, you can do that, but bear in mind, uh, from what I've seen, the flaps tend to creep if you are sitting on the ground for too long. Uh, by that I mean you've got the flaps lever here. So this indicator right here is for the landing gear. So let's go ahead and put this down one notch to take off. And you'll see this little knob rising out of the wing. You'll see it's got a red, a red barber pole and a white barber pole. And you can just see barely the white. But if you do the startup sequence and uh, you do the flaps as part of that, and you take a while doing the rest of the takeoff sequence, sometimes you'll see that that pole has sunk back down into the wing, so the flaps have actually come back up into pretty much the zero position. So once you've got lined up on the runway, you'll want to double check this and see if maybe you have to put the flaps lever back down into the takeoff position again to basically kind of refresh it and make sure that the flaps are in the right position. Uh, also, uh, things to note in regards to the flaps lever and the landing gear lever, like in some other uh, Cold War era Soviet aircraft, you need to have these in the neutral position. So in the case of the flaps, it's straight out. In the case of the landing gear, it's also straight out. Uh, you don't want to have them in any other position for a large amount of time because if they're not in the neutral position, they will be slowly bleeding your pressurized air system dry and that's what's used to give you brake pressure. So if you leave your landing gear handle up or down too long, same thing with the flaps up or down too long, uh, when you come back to land later, you may not have any brakes. So something definitely uh, important to remember here. Let's go ahead and turn on the signal flare switch. This isn't really terribly required, but I tend to do this for all Soviet or Russian aircraft. Let's turn on the nose light, which is the taxi light right here. And unlike the F-86, the nose light for the MiG-15 is built directly into the fuselage. There's nothing that extends or retracts or anything like that. So if you forget to turn this light off, it's not a big deal other than potentially burning it out. Uh, so still, you know, if you remember to go ahead and turn that off once you've taken off, but it's not going to cause any structural issues. While we're at it, just to make your life easier for when you take off, you can go ahead and unlock the landing gear handle. Let's turn on the radar altimeter by left-clicking once in the lower left-hand corner of this instrument. And let's turn on the pitot heat to be up and on position. And if you want internal lighting, you've got the rheostats here. Uh, please note, you probably don't want to have them all the way to maximum because they may potentially burn out. So put them up to maximum and then, and then back them off like maybe an eighth But at this point, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, you're cleared to contact ATC for taxi clearance. Uh, I'll be doing a separate video specific for uh, taxi and takeoff uh, because the uh, nose wheel steering uh, will definitely need to have its own uh, session to go over. But at this point, you're good to go. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you.